until now, we have encountered linear number patterns. So if we have a look at this number pattern here, 19, 15, 11, and 7, we would be able to look at it and see if I subtract 4 from 19, that takes me to 15. If I subtract 4 from 15, that takes me to 11. And if I subtract 4 from 11, that takes me to 7. This is known as a constant first difference. And when we have number patterns that have a constant first difference, they are known as linear number patterns. So this over here, Tn is equal to An plus B. That is the general term for a linear number pattern. And so Tn can be referred to either as the general term or as the nth term. It's very good to get used to the different ways that they can um, pose that question to us. And then we've got this A value, which is the first difference. So if we look at the sequence above, our A value will be a negative 4. And then the B value can be worked out by saying term 1 minus the constant difference or minus that A value. So these are the types of number patterns that we learned about when we were in grade 10. But let's have a look at how things change now that we are in grade 11. Have a look at this number pattern over here. 1, 7, 17, and 31. Now, if we want to have a look at what kind of difference we're dealing with, we are going to say, what can I add or subtract to 1 that will take me to 7? And then I'll do the same thing from 7 to 17 and from 17 to 31. So 1 plus 6 is equal to 7. Then 7 plus 10 is equal to 17. And finally, 17 plus 14 is equal to 31. So do you notice that the first difference of this here number pattern is not constant? And when this happens, we need to move on and we need to try to determine whether or not there is a constant second difference. Let's have a look. What can I add to 6 that will end up at 10? The answer is 4. What can I add to 10 that will take me to 14? The answer again is 4. So what we've now encountered is what is known as a constant second difference. And when number patterns have a constant second difference, they are known as quadratic number patterns. Now the general term or the nth term is expressed with a quadratic formula where we need to discover the values of A, B, and C. And this quadratic formula may be given to you on a formula sheet but the methods that we are going to use to determine the values of A, B, and C are not going to be given to you. So you will need to put these in the memory bank. The first thing we need to remember, grade 11s, is that 2A is equal to the constant second difference. So if we apply that to the sequence that we're looking at above, 2A is equal to 4. And then we solve this equation like we normally would. We just want to find the value of a. We divide both sides by 2. So a is equal to 2. Next up, we need to know that 3a plus b is equal to our first first difference. Okay, Or we could simply say term 2 minus term 1. If you have a look here, our first first difference was 6 or 2. 7 minus 1, term 2 minus term 1, gives us 6. So there we can say 3 times, we know what A is now, it's the value of 2, plus B is equal to 6. We are then going to move, well let's multiply this out, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus B is equal to 6, and if we move that across, we discover that B actually has a value of 0. And then finally, to get the C value, we need to learn one more formula, and that is that A plus B plus C is equal to term 1. So we can substitute what we know so far. 
We know that A has a value of 2. We know that B has a value of 0. We're still going to calculate C. And we were given right up at the top there that term 1 is equal to 1. Now I can solve for this and I discover that C is equal to minus 1. And so we have just determined the general term for this sequence is going to be Tn is equal to 2n squared plus 0n, which we seldom write, minus 1 as our C value. So that would actually be written as 2n squared minus 1. Let's have a look at some examples so that we can make sure we truly understand this section of work. First up, we are given a quadratic pattern. So they've told us that this is quadratic and we then need to know that this pattern is going to have a constant second difference. Then they ask us to determine the formula for the nth term of the pattern. In other words, what's the general term? What is Tn? And then next up, we are going to use our equation for Tn to answer some more questions. All right, well, we know that Tn is going to equal An squared plus Bn plus C. All right, we also know that A, 2A, is equal to our constant second difference. So let's dive in to figuring out what that is. What did I do to 6 to get to 11? I added 5. What did I do to 11 to get to 18? I added 7. What did I do to 18 to get to 27? I added 9. And now I can work out my second difference, which should be constant because I was told this is a quadratic number pattern. And it is indeed. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. So I can use this second difference here and say that it is equal to 2a. So 2a equals 2, and that means that a is equal to 1. We're just going to divide both sides by 2. Then the next formula we need to know is that 3a plus b is equal to our first first difference. So it's equal to 5. Another way we could work that out was to say is equal to 11 minus 6 term 2 minus term 1. Now we substitute in. We know the value of A is 1. So 3 times 1 plus B is equal to 5. And then we can subtract this from the other side. And we end up with the fact that B is equal to 2. And then finally, the last formula we have is a plus b plus c is equal to term 1. And we can now substitute a is 1, b is 2, c we will calculate, and we were given term 1 is equal to 6. And now we can solve c is equal to 6 minus 2 minus 1. So c is equal to 3. And that means we've got our general term or the nth term that they've asked us for there. 1n squared plus 2n plus 3. Now, when they ask us question 2, calculate the value of term 7, I can use this general term to answer their question. So I can say, well, term n is equal to n squared plus 2n plus 3. And so term 7 will simply be 7 squared plus 2 times 7 plus 3. Let's calculate that. Term 7 will be equal to 66. And then finally they say determine the number of terms in this pattern. What are they actually getting at? They have told us that the pattern continues right up until this last term over here, 1446. So what they are actually asking us is to take this formula that we've just determined, n squared plus 2n plus 3, and to say, what is n's value when this formula is equal to 1446? And now it becomes a quadratic equation for us to solve. So we have n squared plus 2n. We're going to bring this 1446 across. It's going to end up being minus 1446. 443 
is equal to zero. And then we've got options. We can factorize or if you're not so confident in the factors of such big numbers, you can use the quadratic formula. Just be careful, we are going to apply the quadratic formula to the specific question they've asked us. So our C value is different from the C value in the general term. We've now applied our general term to determine which term is equal to 1446. So now we can substitute in. So minus B is going to be minus two plus or minus We've got b squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 1,443. And that's all under a square root, all divided by 2 times 1. And then we can pop that into our calculator, and we're going to get two answers for n. Right, so when I type it into my calculator with the plus, minus 2 plus the root, I end up with 37. And when I type it in with the minus, I end up with minus 39. And we will be expected to then say, therefore, term 37 is equal to 1446. Or, um, to actually answer the question more clearly, determine the number of terms. There are 37 terms in this number pattern. Okay, we need to actually say to them, this one here is not applicable because we can't have a negative number, um, a negative term number. Terms start at one and they go on. So term numbers are always natural numbers and that's why we know that 37 is the answer to this question. What's really cool about quadratic number patterns is that we actually see them all around us. So if you've ever been grocery shopping and you've seen stacks where there are tins of food, like in this case, or rolls of toilet paper, you might actually be observing a real life quadratic number pattern. So have a look here. We are, we've got tins of food stacked. In figure one, we've got one tin of food. And then what happens is as this gets built up, they add another two underneath. And so figure two, we're looking at three tins of food. And then what happens? We've got the three, four, five, six tins of food make up figure three. And then finally, seven, eight, nine, ten tins of food make up figure four. So if we look at this number pattern, one, three, six, ten, we should be able to notice whether this is a quadratic or a linear number pattern. Okay, the question they're asking us here is how many tins would be used to create figure five? So we, it's literally the next one on. So we don't necessarily need to work out the whole formula to do that, but we do need to start looking at what kind of differences we are dealing with. So one plus two takes us to three, and three plus three takes us to six, and six plus four takes us to 10. So what we can see straight away is that this is not a constant first difference. But I'm hoping for a constant second difference because we are learning about quadratic number patterns. So to get from 2 to 3, we do add 1. And to get from 3 to 4, we again add 1. So I can now figure out either by saying, okay, well, if I follow this light blue, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, to get to figure 5, I would probably plus 5, or I could take it one step further and work from the second difference down. Either way, I'm going to end up with the fact that there are 15 tins of food in that fifth number, fifth stack of tins of food. All right, now they ask us to calculate TN and hence determine which figure will contain 990 tins. So we need to go to our three formulae that we know very well by now. We know first of all that 2a is equal to our constant second difference. So in this case, the constant second difference we saw to get from two to three, we added one. To get to three, from three to four, we added one. To get from four to five, we added one. So in each case, we are adding one, which means that a is equal to a half. Next up, the formula says three times a 
plus b is equal to our first first difference. So in other words, 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we end up with 1 and a half, that's what 3 times a half is, plus b is equal to 2. And if we move that across to the other side, we're going to subtract it. And so we end up with the fact that b is also equal to a half. And then to find our c value, we know that a, which is a half, plus b, which is a half, plus c is equal to term 1. And have a look there. Term 1 had one tin in the pattern. So half plus half plus c is equal to 1. And if we move these over, we're going to subtract those halves, and we're going to see that c is equal to 1 minus a half minus a half, which is 0. Okay, and so that means tn is equal to, I now know the value of a is a half, I know the value of b is a half, and the value of c is 0. And remember, we don't write we don't need to write zeros you probably won't lose marks if you write them but we don't need them there okay and now they say to us hence what does hence mean it means we need to use what we've just worked out tn the general term hence determine so using this which figure contains 990 tins okay so that's where we take what we've worked out let's uh, set it up over here we're going to take this half n squared plus half n, and we're going to say, when does it equal 990 tins? Okay, now what we'll do, it's a quadratic equation. So the minute I see a square, I bring everything to one side and I get zero on the other side. So we're going to have a half n squared plus a half n minus 990 equals zero. And then in order to make this factorizing easier for myself, I'm going to divide each of these terms by a half. This is definitely going to make my life easier. So I'm going to end up with n squared plus n minus 1980 is equal to zero. Okay, now once again, I can jump into the quadratic formula, but I thought I would just show you a different method for this one so that you can compare and choose which ones you want to. Okay, so you can look for some factors of 1980 that can give you an answer here of one. All right, so if I checked and I saw that 44 times 45 gives me 1980, then I can definitely use a 44 and a 45 to give me a positive one. Okay, and how would I do that? I'd have my two brackets. What multiplied by itself gives me n squared? That's gonna be an n in each bracket. And then I'm going to add plus 45 minus 44. Why? Because plus 45 minus 44 is gonna give me plus that one there in the middle. And if I multiply them, a positive times a negative is a negative. 45 times 44 is 1980. Okay, and then I can solve this. And so I end up with n is either equal to minus 45. Remember this whole bracket equals zero, or this whole bracket equals zero here. So or n is equal to positive 44 once I've taken it over the equal sign. Okay, and then just like we saw in the previous example, I cannot have a negative. So this one is not applicable, and this is our answer here. Figure 44 or term 44 will have 990 tins. Now that you are exceptionally good at determining the general term and applying that general term, let's really put your knowledge to the test here. So we are given a quadratic pattern and then the numbers are 3, 7, x, and 21, and then it carries on. Okay, so x is suddenly missing from our number pattern, and what they want us to do is to determine the value of this missing number. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've been given, and then we're going to use our brains to see how we can figure out what is missing. 
Okay, so the minute I am given a number pattern, I immediately go and I look for differences. I hope you do the same. Okay, 7 minus 3 gives me a difference of 4. And then x minus 7 gives me a difference of x minus 7, because I don't know what x is. If I knew what that number was, I could work it out. And then similarly, 21 minus x is also going to just give me the 21 minus x. Now, you may be tempted to set these equal and say, well, x minus 7 must equal 4, and I want to solve. But remember, this is a quadratic pattern. If, that, if it were a linear pattern, we could do it. A linear pattern has a constant first difference. But a quadratic pattern has a constant second difference. So be careful there. We are going to have to do some more subtracting. So we're going to have to work out a second difference here. So term 3 minus term 2. Have a look at how I use my brackets. And then on this side, it's going to be term 2 minus term 1. Okay, and those second differences must be equal. And that is how we are going to solve at grade 11s. So we're going to take the second difference here, x minus 7 minus 4, and we're going to set it equal to 21 minus x. Let's multiply this minus in here so long. That's going to give us minus x plus 7. Have a look at that sign change. Okay, now we're going to get all of our x's together on the one side. Let's just highlight them for ourselves here. And we're going to move all the constants. They're going to go together. This is a linear equation. Although I'm solving a quadratic pattern, it's come down to something very simple. There aren't any x squareds. That's why I like to collect them all. Uh, so let's get all the x's on one side. You will see there we've got three x's then on the left equal to. And let's have a look at what we're going to end up with there. We've got a 21 plus 7, so that's 28. When we bring this over, it's going to become another plus 7. So 28 plus 7 is 35. And then another minus 4 coming over, we're going to add that too. So all in all, we're going to add 39. And then if you want to check what is the value there of x, well, let's divide both sides by 3. And we end up with the fact that x is equal to 13. Okay, let's check our answers. We never want to just assume that we are right. So 3, 7, 13, and 21. Let's see if this truly is a quadratic number pattern. So 3 to 7, or 7 minus 3, is 4. 13 minus 7 is going to give us 6. And 21 minus 13 is going to give us 8. Now, do we have a constant second difference? That is going to be the game changer for us. What do I do to 4 to get to 6? I add 2. What do I do to 6 to get to 8? I add 2. And so that means, grade 11s, we have done it. If we substitute in the value 13 for the place of x, we end up with a quadratic number pattern. So be very careful in reading your questions. Because when they say quadratic, we need to work all the way down to the second difference and then set them equal. Mm -hmm.